Aids to Devotion by Andrew Murray Chapter 7 The Spirit of Access Ephesians 2 verse 18 So that through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Have you ever noticed the wonderful beauty of the passage that leads up to the words of our text? Verses 4 through 10 set forth the great salvation with which God has visited us in connection with the words, By grace you are saved through faith. You are saved. God has made us alive together with Christ, and has raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We are his workmanship, having been created in Christ Jesus for good works. What a salvation! All the work of God in us. By grace. That points to what had been said, God being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. That in the ages to come, that is, from the resurrection onward, he might demonstrate the surpassing wealth of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. What a riches and a glory of God's grace! Through faith, not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not from works, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand. What a salvation, and what a grace prepared for faith to receive and live in. Then follows in verses 11 through 17 the way in which these Gentiles had been led to the knowledge of that salvation, brought near by the blood of Christ with Christ their peace, destroying the enmity and reconciling Jew and Gentile in one body unto God through the cross. And so we reach our text, so that through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Here again we have the Blessed Trinity with this precious lesson. The great work in which Christ and the Holy Spirit are united is to make the permanent and unceasing presence of God a blessed reality. Our text not only speaks of a right of access, but of its actual enjoyment as secured to us through Christ and His Spirit. Access to the Father Think of what Scripture teaches us. In the tabernacle, the holiest of all in which God dwelt, was separated by a thick veil from the holy place where the priests came daily to serve. Not even the high priest might enter that holiest of all except on one day of the year. Access through the veil was forbidden on penalty of death. Christ Jesus not only entered into God's presence with his blood, but he opened a new and living way through the torn veil of his flesh for us to enter also. When the veil was torn in the tabernacle, the way was opened, not only to the high priest, but to all the priests. When Jesus entered heaven, the way was opened for every believer to enter into God's holy presence, not for a time, but to dwell there every day and all the day. Jesus sent down out of heaven the Holy Spirit, whom, as Son of Man, he had received from the Father to bring us into that holy presence and enable us to live in it. The unbroken enjoyment of God's presence is possible to every believer who will forsake all to possess it. Through the Son. That does not only mean as our advocate who secures our acquaintance and acceptance. It means much more. Our high priest lives and acts in the power of an endless, incorruptible life. All he works in us is in the power of his resurrection life and his entrance into glory. To have access to God through Christ means that as those who have been made alive together with Christ and have been seated with him in the heavenly realms, we live in him, we are one with him, we abide in him, and by him we are ever brought and kept in the fellowship with God. The access through Christ brings us as near to God as Christ is in an intimate divine fellowship that passes all understanding in one spirit. The spirit has been given to us so that we may have the power to cry, Abba, Father, even as Christ did. The spirit dwells in us to reveal Christ. Without him, no man can truthfully call Jesus Lord. The spirit takes possession of our whole life and being. 
where he is yielded to and trusted, he maintains the fellowship with the Father through the Son in the holiest of all, a divine reality in our life experience. Such is the New Testament standard of Christian living, entrance and access to God's holy presence and love through the living union with Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. The one thing that is needed to make it ours is the practice of the presence of God, the giving of our life to death, so that Christ's life, as he sought on earth even to please the Father, may be carried out in us. Nothing less will do but this, access through Christ in the Spirit, restoring to us what Adam had lost in the fall, a walk in the light of God, as clear and natural as is the enjoyment of sun to our bodies. No thinking, no feeling, no working can enable us to dispense with the actual exercise day by day of the privilege of access into the holiest of all and of dwelling there. Most of us are familiar with the hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. I was struck by the use of the expression in the life of Griffith John. After being in China more than twenty years, he often said to young missionaries, Preach the gospel and take time to be holy as the preparation. In the mission conference in Shanghai in 1877, he said, The missionary must above everything be a holy man. The Chinese expected of him. I am persuaded that no minister can be a great spiritual power in whom this is not seen in good measure. He must be more than a good man, a man who takes time not only to master the language and the literature of the people, but to be holy. Brethren, this is what we need if this empire is to be moved by us. To this end, the throne of grace must be our refuge. The shadow of the Almighty must every day and every hour be our dwelling. We must take time to be filled with his power. We must take time to be holy. It is he who takes time to avail himself fully of access to the holiest of all, where God dwells and reveals himself through Christ and the Spirit, on whom this blessed truth will dawn that full fellowship with God in His holiness will make us holy too. It is this that will make the inner chamber the school of true devotion. Take time with God, the thrice holy one. Take time with the Father, of whom it is said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, Now may the God of peace make you completely holy, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept entirely blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is trustworthy, and he will in fact do this. Take time with Christ, the Holy One of God, who spoke in John 17, verse 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Take time with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God's holiness, making you his holy temple. Give time to this holy fellowship. God himself will sanctify you wholly. Live in the unbroken experience. Through Christ we have our access in one spirit unto the Father.